begin our service this morning with a salute by the American Legion of America.
appreciate these gentlemen, don't you? They will meet us at the cemetery for a uh, salute and a service, a brief service there when we get to the cemetery later. Uh, but I want to welcome you here. Those of you Free Baptist Church, we're here to celebrate the life of Lawrence Lee Tomlinson. Now, this has been a day and a long time coming. It almost seemed like when August ever got here, and it's here. Uh, April 2nd seems a long time ago. Uh, let's begin our service today with a prayer, if you would uh, join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, your word says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me for your I am. Lord, we do believe in you, Jesus. We believe in me. We ask you that you would help, help us in our unbelief. Grant us peace. Bring comfort to every grieving heart. Fill us with happy memories. Show us the way of life everlasting. For it is in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. The families asked that we would uh, sing a song or two, and so we're going to start with When We All Get to Heaven. So you're welcome if you'd like to stand and sing and see if you've got your way on this side. Just so you, you didn't want to be on camera, did you? We do have some folks watching on Facebook already. Uh, Florida, Ohio, uh, the middle of the state of Michigan. So there's a few people watching even now. So that's cool. But uh, let's let's stand together and sing When We All Get to Heaven. It's an easy song if you don't know it. It's right there. Oh, and we all get to heaven. But a 
so when he turned 70, he thought it was time to step down, uh, but they wanted him to stay. That speaks a lot. Uh, and perhaps the most important service of all is that Lee served in the U.S. Navy for four years. Uh, that means a lot to a lot of people these days, more than ever, right? To support our veterans and our, and our current military. Um, so at this time, I would love to have you share a trivia or a story. It doesn't be that fancy. I call them trivia. But really, it's your favorite story. If you have a favorite memory, a certain memory that you'd like everybody to hear, or a certain story, or sometimes, it, it, uh, another, another way to look at it is when I think of Lee, this word comes to mind. He was fill in the blank. So you don't have to come up here. You can just stand right where you are and just speak so everybody can hear you. You may have to put on the mask or something. So who would like to go first? I think a gentleman in the front row with the green shirt, he probably would be willing to kick us off. And maybe that will get the rest of you, get the juices flowing. Bob, would you share? Uh, thanks, Pastor. I'm Bob Phillips, and my mother Bonnie uh, leaves history. I'd first like to start off with uh, sending my condolences to my cousin, Kelly, Gary, and Randy uh, for the loss of their father. And again, to my mother, she has suffered through two bipolar illnesses, but uh, the loss of service with the military and other things that I've done. You know, you lose track and you know your careers and friends. I mean, except at family events, uh, this group of people that have gathered here. And I had the fortune earlier this year uh, to accompany the master baker of Maine, my mother, <laughs> up to uh, my Uncle Lee's where she dropped off uh, cake pie and cookies. But I sat down with him, and we were there about an hour or more, and I was really struck by his acuity of memory of what we did as children. Oh, and oh. the times that we <laughs> took uh, hunting trips, he remembers going out to Burlington Cemetery and Silverwood when we were jumping brush piles and going after rabbits. And, uh, uh, he was always, I uh, held him in awe because he would take a 22 rifle, a single shot, as I recall. And he'd hit these rabbits with a corner shoot. And I was lucky to get him with a 12 and he was three or four rounds, you know. And, but, and then another trip that we took up to Glenning and uh, again, hunting snowshoe rabbits. But I was really struck by the fact that he knew this. And I always knew Uncle Lee would be pretty direct when he was here, or when he felt like he needed to be. But also very humorous and uh, a fun guy to be around, always teasing. Seems to me that day to talk about Randy and his Dunlop issues when Kelly Dunlop was involved. <laughs> and, uh, so, anyway, those fond memories are, are mine, and uh, I just wanted to share them with you all. And thanks, Pastor, for the opportunity. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, the Dunlop boys. <laughs> it has a way of going around. It, it didn't miss me. Oh, no. Oh, so, okay. yeah. Anyone else would like to share? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Matt Lee, Jim Lee. First moved to Mayville in 71. Uh, Lee actually put in our swimming pool one year. So he was one of the first customers. That was part of their construction work, big swimming pool and uh, green bin. Uh, made by the same company that did the steel lining. Uh, but Lee and I, as we met and talked, uh, found out that he was 
playing softball for the Navy team at Massachusetts Players Station. I was in the Air Force in the Finger Lakes on a base. Lee came to visit that base and played baseball there. While I was there. Now I didn't know Lee at that time, and I didn't go to the baseball game either. But uh, or softball. But uh, I was on the bank board with Lee. He was uh, one of those guys that didn't say a lot, but when he when he said something, you better listen because it was right on. And one time in Florida, and we were in uh, in Dunedin, Florida, Lee called me and said he was coming over to Clearwater to play ball. And I thought, geez, I'll, I'll go over and see him. And I knew where the place was, so we went over there. I couldn't count the number of knee braces I saw. <laughs> On the field? Yeah, on the field. On the field. And uh, it's a different thing, and it was a great thing. But later, Lee was on a national championship senior softball league somewhere in California, I think they went, or maybe Reno or anyway. But they, he, was a, he was a good ball player. Now, remember when he quit, he said, he went after this ground ball, but his nose went past him and his leg did. And he thought that was the time he quit. He fell flat on his face. So, but he was quite a guy and I admired him immensely. Oops. Anyone else? I have one to read in a moment. Before I do, does anyone else want to share anything? Okay. I'll share this off of Okay, Randy. Um, Is it Randy? A couple of things. Uh, when he was in Florida, Glenn, uh, he picked up a bat one day. And it happened to be one of the newest ones out there. I think they call them the Marines. But anyway, the ball just jumped off the bat. So he comes home, story has it, he went back to the park where mom and dad had their trailer and <laughs> convinced her that he just had to have this bat. Well, lo and behold, I don't know the exact number. It was well above $100, $200 for this bat. Well, my mother was a pretty good negotiator, so she got new rings out of the deal. <laughs> Buy it for you. So uh, that was the 
story on how I got my first boat. He made the deal. <laughs> so, and as a kid growing up, uh, he always allowed you to tag along. So, it was great. I'd like to read a, 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 a little letter from, uh, from Nikki, his granddaughter. She says, Grandpa always spoke his mind. Every time we bring up this memory, it always makes me smile. I remember about five and a half years ago, Grandpa, Uncle Bum, and Cody went out fishing together. Then I learned, what I learned later was that Grandpa had a little talk with Cody. Grandpa said to Cody, so when are you and Nikki going to give me another great grandchild? I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> I'm sure it took Cody off guard. But much to Grandpa's surprise, a few months later we told him that we were pregnant with our son, William. And when we decided on a name, it wasn't hard to choose his middle name. Grandpa needed the credit on getting the ball rolling. <laughs> We are thankful for our William ones every day, and we will always have a little bit of Grandpa with us forever. So I did. That was beautiful. Well, I want to take a moment to support uh, the family. Uh, listen to these words of life and, and hope from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. I look up to the hills. Where does my help come from? Does it come from up there? No, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over you, over your life, and the Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. He's always watching over us. What a great promise that he will be there for us. So let's a moment, uh, take a moment and we'll pray for the family. Heavenly Father, we lift up everyone in the knees extended family. Lord, we lift them up onto your altar. Lord, please bless this family. Keep them, comfort them by the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, please give them the hope of heaven. Through belief in your resurrection, for just as you live, so does everyone who believes and trusts in you. Be with this family. You have been in these months. Be with them in the days and weeks to come, helping them to remember and share wonderful memories. Bless and comfort them, especially give grace to Randy and and Lord, we pray all this in the holy name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, I'd like to talk to you just a little bit about God's love. You know that God is love, right? Uh, we're here because of love for Lee. Uh, the Bible says this, says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. And his love made, is made complete in us. Well, it's, as it's been said, Lee loved to tease. Um, were you on the receiving end of his teasing? How many of you? Pretty much everybody. Raising his children, they tell me that he was stern but loving. He, he could be a stern dad with the boys. Uh, 
Uh, and that sounds like God, actually. He is stern but loving. God is love and so much more. He loves us enough to hold us accountable. So what kind of, what is this kind of love that is God's love? It's a love that sacrifices. It's a love that gives of itself. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, God's love forgives, is slow to anger, and full of mercy. God's love actually does forgive and forget. We can't do the forgetting part. But he does. Keeping, he keeps no record of wrongs. Love bears with you when you are at your worst. Love celebrates with you when you are at your best. God is love and he is always here looking for another personal relationship. So the question remains, as we think about how God so loved you, that he gave his son for you, when we think about that, the question remains, how does one tap into this love of God? How do we, how do we connect to it? I mean, is it enough to imitate that love or or can you actually, like, swim in God's love? Well, God's love is offered. All you do is receive it. It's all we do. We receive that love. And we learn how to love him back. Perhaps you remember a time in your life when you received the love of God into your heart. Uh, it may have been in a church. It may have been with a family member. Or it may have been outside uh, at a camp. Uh, my, my faith started in church as a child. But it came to fruition at a Christian camp. And uh, I opened the door of my heart to the love of God. And it, it's a moment that I will never forget. I remember thinking, he knows me. And now I get to know him. Now, I was only eight years old when this took place. And I, I, so I, I knew the love of God. but uh, And that I knew that he was in me. However, I, at that age, I did not know, uh, what I didn't know was how to bring God home from camp with me. And as I'd get home in the summer from camp, then life would take its toll on me. And I would, by the time I got back to school, I didn't feel as close to God anymore. So I was having a hard time bringing God home from camp with me and didn't know how to say it. Now I look back on it, I, I know what was going on, but... But as I grew older, I resisted the love of God through my high school and through my college years. And it was around age 23, I finally gave in. I received the love of God once and for all, now as an adult, and it felt like coming home. Um, it was a feeling of coming home. Uh, the best decision I ever made. It's, it led to so many other great decisions as I walked with uh, Jesus over these decades. Now, Every person who trusts in Christ as their Lord and Savior receives the love of God poured into their hearts by the Holy Spirit. Uh, so when you don't feel loving towards somebody, just remember, if you're in Christ, His love is in you. You just have to tap into His love. Okay? Um, and if you've experienced only human love, then, then you're missing a huge part of the puzzle. Because, as I've said, God is love and you need His Love. Uh, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and your soul, and your mind. Then love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your family, great. I can see there's a lot of love in this family. But are you in the family of God? You see, to those who believe in Jesus Christ, the light of the world, God gives the right to be called children of God. It's from the Gospel of John. So contrary to popular belief, uh, we are all, we are not all children of God. All of humanity is not children of God, although we are all made in his image. So maybe that's why people say, uh, you know, refer to everybody as, well, we're all, we're all child, children of God. Um, but we're all made in God's image, but we're not his children 
adopted into the family um, until a certain moment in time happens, right? Now, you were born into your family, but you are not born automatically into God's family until you put your trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. Um, to those who believe, he gives the right to become children of God. And so uh, the Bible says that to live is Christ and to die is gain. We get to go be with him. Now, if you want God's love, you got it. Just recognize. I've got three R's for you. Recognize your sin. And that's just breaking God's laws. We've all broken God's laws. We look at Exodus 20 and go through the Ten Commandments. We'll find out we've all broken multiples of the Ten Commandments. Have you always told the truth? There you go. So that makes me a liar because I haven't always told the truth. Uh, so I need to be forgiven for that. I've never uh, committed adultery. I've never uh, killed anybody. But uh, wait a minute, that number one commandment, always keep God first in your life. Have I done that? No. I haven't always done that. Even as I've walked with Christ, I haven't always kept God first. I've gotten out ahead of him, and he's reined me in a few times. And I've tried to get out ahead of God. Or he's gotten ahead of me, and I didn't want to follow him. Just the, you know, so we all need forgiveness because we've all broken those uh, commandments. About coveting, have you ever wanted something that somebody else had? I wish you did. No. <laughs> have you ever? I was, you got me thinking now. Maybe I, you know, when I retire a couple years, fishing boat sounds like a good idea, right? My wife there. Okay. Too bad at least not around to negotiate for me. <laughs> so, I'll think about it though. And, uh, that's usually what I say. Is that your best friend? That's a good way to go, to start. Is that the best you can do? Um, so if you want God's love, first of all, you recognize that you've broken God's laws and you try to be God in your own life. And then the second R is repent. That's just a fancy word that means you turn from those sins. You, you, when you repent, you make a decision not to do those things anymore. You may fall into them occasionally, but you have made a decision not to do them. Um, and then the, the last R, is uh, receiving by faith in Christ Jesus the salvation and eternal life from God. So you recognize, you repent. Um, repent is trusting in the forgiveness paid for by the blood of Christ. It's, it's not trusting in your own works. And, uh, and then you just receive by faith that salvation. So we're going to pray, and I'd like to lead us in a prayer for that. And, uh, and then um, the body asked if we would sing amazing things. So we'll sing some verses of, of amazing grace. And because uh, God's grace is indeed amazing, His mercy, right? He pardons us uh, with, by His mercy. And then He gives us great and wonderful things by His grace, things we don't deserve. So it's awesome. So let's pray. Lord, we want to respond to you today to the offer of your love. Lord, we recognize that we have not always lived for you. Ourselves. Lord, we recognize these things that we have done, these sins that have been really done not, not just against other people or against ourselves, but against you. We have sinned against you, Lord. Show, our heart, show us in our hearts right now how, how perhaps uh, we have sinned against But Lord, I thank you that when we repent, uh, you see it. If we repent, Lord, we say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. I believe with all I understand that, that Jesus died for those sins, for my sins. And Lord, I believe with all I understand that you raised your son from the dead. And in so doing, by trusting in him, not only for the forgiveness, there is an offer of eternal life and the Holy Spirit for me. So, Lord, now I receive by faith, I, just by faith, I believe it. I, because your word promises that, that if I recognize and repent, then I can receive the gift of eternal life, the Holy Spirit into my heart, forgiveness, pardon for my sins, 
peace and a joy and a comfort that passes all understanding. So, Lord, I receive all those things right now. And it's all your doing through the Son of your kingdom, through the work of your Son, Jesus, on the cross. Thank you for the cross. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's a prayer of life and act. You may have prayed it right now. If you haven't, make sure you talk to Bonnie or Randy, Terry, Deborah, because they would love to know that at this memorial service you gave your heart to Christ and it's living inside you. Or maybe you, as I said the words, you're like, yeah, I wouldn't have ordered it quite like that. You know, I had a, a dear friend once who said, yeah, Sunday morning, yeah, I prayed that prayer with you, but but, but, it, but I woke up at 2 in the morning, about 2.30, and I, I, I started thinking, well, did I really, was that real? And I, I want to make sure. So I kind of did it again in my own words. And, and, and that, that friend of mine is still walking. So perhaps I've just planted a seed, uh, but it's, it's all to God's glory, and it's it's it is in the honor of, of me. So let's uh, uh, stand if you're able, and let's sing "Amazing Grace." <laughs> see for a moment as uh, Mr. Abrams comes to give us some instructions for heading to the cemetery. 